Multimedia, how to make social media content. My name is Russell Miles and this is the third episode about creating social media content. We'll include further demonstrations of editing, we will cover more about lighting, details with green screens and special effects, along with titles, subtitles and consider legal and ethical issues. In the previous episode I showed a studio LED light that I used to brighten the scene. Normal room lights with perhaps a desk lamp should suffice if you are recording a headshot talking to camera. Try to reflect the lights off walls to create a diffused lighting which will avoid stark shadowing. Turning on as many lights as you have in a room will help create this effect. While directing a light at a subject can add to definition, you need other lights that shine from behind to remove shadows. In daytime, open blinds to the outside to help add light to any room. An important consideration is to ensure any light is in front of the subject and not radiating from behind. This will have you dark and obscure. And also be aware that windows can reflect images, so try to keep them out of the frame. Consider objects that may reflect directly at the camera, glass vases, TV sets and shiny metal. And our faces are very shiny objects too, which is why professional actors use makeup to dull skin tone. Recording outside in daytime generally won't require lighting. Modern video software is designed to maximise resolution in lower light. If an electric power point is nearby, a couple of studio lights with a cover can help. An electrical extension cord ought to be amongst your basic equipment. There are also reflective screens that will direct available sunlight that can be a great aid. To reveal action or movement, there needs to be adequate lighting. Whereas a static scene is easy to record, you will find yourself making choices between how much action compared to the detail being shown. Look through your camera to get a sense if lighting is working. Move about or move the subject about to obtain optimal effect. Record a variety of takes so you'll have a choice of what you may use in the final editing. Now I'm going to record a simple scene such as attending the opera. And then Let's have a look at some more editing. I'm going to choose an image. Yes. Now I'm going to trim it up so we don't have to look at the whole lot. Just go into File, Delete. There's a various number of options for um, trimming out a file to make it easier. I can just click and drag it around. Now I'm going to put some video down there. This is a moving picture. Let's cut around me to make me looking like um, I'm just behind the green screen because that will help us with um, showing the green screen effect. Again, just clicking and dragging, moving it around, tidying up so it's just my face and then the image. Now I can drag this image across the first image. I move it up and down, put it in roughly where I want it. Now. I go into video and choose the option to um, change the green screen. There's a number of settings here that I can move back and forth so that the image behind is then um, sitting clearly. I can change the edging of my photo um, and the sharpness of it. I can now move this up and down to try and make it look like I'm actually sitting in the front row of the concert. Right, now take it to the beginning and run it through. Yep, there's me chatting away as if I know what I'm talking about in front of some cool musicians. I'll move it a little bit to try and make, oh yeah, I want to make it look like I'm sitting in a seat. Yep, that's all right. I can make it bigger. Now I'm going to add in a title. I just click titles, drag it in. Now again, simply writing over the demonstration to write in demo of green screen. I can cut, delete, move it back and forth. I can go into the screen and adjust it and move it around to make it fit where I want it to be. Now I move up this subtitle, I write something in there as well. Adjust that a little bit. Yep, cool. Now I can even go and check different shapes, colours and forms of the text to you know, make this look cool. 
um, as a matter of graphic design, simplicity is the best. Don't make it too complicated. Right, I've got that there now. Now, I'm going to use this advanced setting. Now, I can make the images come in at a faster or slower rate. So I've made these adjustments. Now, I'll run it through now. Here they come in. Yeah, a moderate speed. Let's click on advance again. Now, I'm going to slow the speed that they transition a bit. Start it again. Now, this comes in a bit slower. Now, if I want to, I can make it go faster by, again, dragging this back. Let's run it through. Whoop, wizard in. There it is. Okay, that's cool. Now, I'm going to mess around with the volume. I can fade it in, fade it out. I can enhance it. I can remove any background noises that might be in one of the scenes that I don't want. I can also simply go onto the track and raise and lower the sound to see what, yeah, that's louder. Okay. Now I'm going to pick another image and I'm going to put it in after the first just to show what a transition from one image to another looks like. So I'll pick this another scene of the cool Again, this is a static image. I can make it longer, shorter, whatever I choose. Now I'll go into transition. And there's a range of simple to complex transitions from one image to another. So I place it in. I'll put another one on the my headshot. So as it goes along, my headshot is removed and the rear image of the singers just twists and curls around and then turns up to this other one. Yeah, but you know, I mightn't like that, so I can still fiddle around with it a bit. And be aware that sometimes it'll just default to a brief section of black. It depends on how you set it. And there's a bit of fiddling around to try and get it right. But sometimes you just can't avoid this short section of blank. Now, I can also change the size in the background. There's a guy whose shoulder is in the corner, so I'm just you know, making it bigger and moving it out. Now, I'm going to add in a subtitle. Again, go into subtitles, click a subtitle. There's a whole range of options. I can click different ones. I'm looking for one that slides across. I put it in. It actually comes up with two things. One I delete, the other one I write over. Get the words correct. Make it a bit bigger. Move it across. Now let's have a look at the demo. Slides across from one side to the other. Now I'm putting in end credits. Just simply writing over the existing one. There's a whole lot of proformers that you can use. There it is. They come in. And again, I can change the color, shape, the text. I can add in some other things. Yep, now that fades in. But I'm now going to change it to it comes in from the side whatever you like and now most important save it under a unique name Let's see when making audio visuals you'll have a relationship with any folk you record including other people's property used in a scene or material you might download or borrow and you certainly have a relationship with your viewers this relationship creates what is referred to at law as a duty of care this obliges you to take reasonable steps to avoid or limit any harm. This ought not to be too onerous or inhibit creativity. You are not expected to prevent any possible harm and others must exercise responsibility for themselves. For example, you might be recording a cyclist riding along a highway wearing different types of high vis wear lights and so on so as to demonstrate their effect on how close motorists pass there would be a moderate risk for the cyclist being filmed. To address this danger, you might assign a person to watch over the cyclist and call off the activity if a danger emerges, such as a motorist driving too close or the approach of a speeding vehicle and such like. And include a caution to any viewers that such an activity requires a risk assessment and best not done by themselves. These steps would meet your legal duty of care in the circumstances. The more dangerous the activity, the more steps you must take. For example, in discussing mental health issues or sexual assault, you might include a caution to viewers before they begin to watch, and include a link as to where support for survivors is available. 
There will be rare subject matters that you must not discuss, for example, creating poisons from household items. Defamation is where a person or a business seek damages for loss of reputation due to someone publishing or otherwise distributing material that causes others to think less of them, so incurring economic loss such as customers avoiding a business. Defamatory material can take many forms including blogs, articles, novels, poems, photos, songs, emails, cartoons, drawings, paintings, online reviews, podcasts and social media posts. Common defences against defamation include that the publication was of public concern or substantially true, that the aggrieved party is unlikely to sustain any harm to the reputation, perhaps they had a poor reputation to begin with, that the defendant did not know that the published material was defamatory. For example, a bookseller may not have known that the contents of a book placed on display included defamatory content. This criteria is used by social media corporations and that they cannot know what a contributor may have said or done. Criminal libel includes conspiracy to commit a crime, insulting words, inciting violence or hatred, an offence under the summary in criminal law, e.g. displaying offensive material, instructions for bomb making, perjury, willfully telling an untruth or making a misrepresentation under oath, mostly around testimony at court. Offensive conduct is a contextual offence, which means that the court will have to base it on circumstances. It is broad in nature and can include antisocial behaviours and verbal abuse. For example, saying fuck in an academic discussion, or in this podcast, in a satirical comment, or when such a phrase is customarily heard like a pub, is not likely to be considered offensive. But say the same phrase in a public meeting, church service or playground, and this may be considered a different matter. It is the right of every man to comment freely, fairly and honestly on any matter of public interest. Lord Berkerick, 1951. The principle means it is not defamatory when words are expressed as an opinion and not a statement of fact. However, it may be difficult to determine if words are a statement of fact or an expression of an opinion. Making statements that you assert are made by another person which was defamatory is treated as a new publication and can be held as a libel as well. Avoiding stating the name of someone where enough information has been given that they may be identified is not a defence. Inserting alleged in a preface to an allegation as part of a news story generally suffices as a defence, but repeat this ad nauseum and it may be considered by a court as intending to insult and degrade. A retraction is issuing a statement to correct or express contrition within a reasonable time frame. This must be as prominent and clear as the original statement. If you have been accused of making a defamatory comment or publishing defamatory material, you should seek legal advice immediately, as there may be significant consequences for not responding in an appropriate time frame. Finally, consider why is it that criminals who are beaten, raped and murdered are almost never sued for harm cause, but a local council that fails to post a sign saying swimming at an unpatrolled beach may be hazardous have been successfully sued. That topic is an entire podcast of itself. Our next episode will go into publishing, copyright and intellectual property, teamwork and more on creating a home studio. If you like this channel, please subscribe and tick like. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I can be contacted at email rustmills at iparmas.com.au. Thanks for listening.